morning guys and gals froggy here we're going to call this part two of doing a brake job on an E36 BMW um, if you want to go back and look at part one you can look it up on my videos uh, that was the brake inspection um, right now I'm picking up where we left off the cars already jacked up the wheels have been removed uh, first thing we're going to do is remove the okay under the car we're going to remove the little plastic caps here one there one up on top we're going to remove the sensor wire the sensor and its wire we're going to remove the caliper retaining clip brake pad retaining clip and the guide pins the, the guide pins are going to be underneath where we take these plastic caps off right there okay I want to show you this to get these springs out you want to pry in side here you see there's a little a little tip here these springs here and here are pressing this this way so you have to pry towards the back of the car once you get this little tip clear it'll come loose the bottom side will come loose I've got one hand on the camera now and one hand here but you want to use two hands you want to wear a glove and you want to cover this spring up so it doesn't go flying into your face okay so just pry it in there it'll come loose it'll come right out like that a seven millimeter Allen will get that out I've got a set of Allen's that fit on a socket you might have the ones that are like an L shape either one will work this gives you a little more torque on it when you try to bust them loose there's a cover where the brake wear sensor connects and it's got on this car on this 95 it's got little tabs there there and there to open it up I'm going to open it up. You want to be careful you don't break these off because then you, you know, you'll have to buy a new one of these or you'll have to glue it or something. Okay, there we got it open and we're going to take, we'll disconnect this one and we'll put the new one in there. Okay, we've got it off. Be careful you don't break, well I guess it doesn't matter if you're putting a new one on these little tabs will get replaced anyway just be careful you don't damage the female end because I mean the male end excuse me uh, because that is a different part that runs into a wiring harness you don't want to have to replace that these are your pins that the caliper slides on two of them they're screwed into your bracket and then the caliper just kind of slides in and out, slides in and out this way as as the pads wear, hence sliding caliper. The piston is only on one side. Piston, hydraulic fluid comes in, presses the piston, presses the pad up against the rotor. The other side just goes along for the ride. It just captures the other side. The other pad is on this side. It's not like a racing uh, caliper, but it works pretty good. If your uh, pads were really worn down, you'll have a lip, the wear here, but the original thickness is here, so you'll have a lip. It'll be hard to get the caliper off. So what I do is take a big C-clamp, and I'm compressing on the pad this side, and on the caliper on the other side so I'm compressing the piston that has come out I'm compressing it back in you'll have to take some brake fluid out of your master cylinder otherwise you might overflow your master cylinder but this will give me some room to get the caliper out 
Okay, <clears throat> we've got the uh, caliper off. I'm hanging it with a bungee cord. It's pretty heavy. You don't want to let it hang by the flexible brake hose because you could damage this hose inside or outside and get some unusual braking. The inner pad comes off with the caliper. The outer pad stays on the bracket here. I only took about six or seven turns with that big clamp. I compressed I compressed this piston and that gave me enough room to slide the whole thing off. Here you can see the sensor that has, the pad is worn down enough so that the sensor is touching the rotor and it shorts out the contact here and that's what turns your uh, check your pads light on. We're going to take this caliper bracket off so that we can get to the rotor and put a new rotor on. This rotor is worn down. As I showed you, it's got a lip on both sides. And if I put a, a micrometer on there, I, I bet you 99% uh, it's going to be below spec. But, so this bolt here, I don't know what the size is yet, and this one down here going to come off. Then this bracket will come off, and then I can take the rotor off, put the new rotor on. Okay? Okay, I've got those caliper bolts almost off. I used my air gun, and actually, you're going to laugh, but a 5 8 socket is what you use. The equivalent millimeter, I just don't have in all my millimeter sizes. I guess it would be about a uh, 16 millimeter, but it's 16 millimeter is an odd size, so 5 eighths goes right on there. Oh, take it right off. Okay, to get the rotor off now, we need to take this little this little capture uh, bolt on here. It's a it's a six millimeter Allen. Uh, should come right off, I hope. Uh, by the way, you might notice I turned the whole assembly. I I, I got in the car and uh, turned the ignition. I didn't start it up. I just turned the ignition to unlock the wheel, and I crank the wheel a couple of turns or maybe one turn just so I could get at those caliper bolts otherwise they hit some of the other suspension there when I try to get my big my big air gun in there it was uh, not getting any clearance so you can just turn that a little bit I'm cleaning up these uh, rotors usually they come with some grease or some coating on them that will uh, prevent them from rusting because rotors rust. Uh, I cleaned it up first with some with some brake clean. Now I'm going to use some sandpaper. It's not just any old sandpaper. This is garnet paper. The reason you want to use garnet paper is it doesn't have any metal in it. It's not like a aluminum oxide paper. It's not like emery cloth. It's not like other kinds of sandpaper because if you use those other kind of sandpapers, you can impregnate the rotor with some of that material and then it may not react well with the pads that you choose. The garnet paper is safe to use. So I'm going to tear off a little piece of that. These are pretty clean already, but I'm just going to get any last residue of the preservative that they had on here. I'm going to get it off with the garnet paper and garnet paper and a little bit of brake clean. Just scrub them up. Okay, we're starting to put things back together now. The uh, caliper bracket, I cleaned it up, put it back on. I used a little, a little bit of Loctite, a little blue Loctite on the caliper bracket bolts. They go to, uh, they go to torque of 80 foot-pounds. Okay, we got our caliper back up. We haven't got the uh, 
uh, calipers sliding uh, pins in yet. I had trouble with the the dust boot that goes around the piston popped out a little bit so it took me some time to shove that back in there so you want to be careful when you take the caliper off depress the piston before you even try to start taking it off because you might move that piston boot off like I did a little bit and it's a pain in the butt to get it back in there okay the sliding pins are back in torque to 22 foot-pounds and they do not get lubricated according to the BMW factory service manual so I just cleaned them up and they went in uh, without any lubrication on them some other vehicles will have you lubricate the caliper slide pins on this type of braking system but not BMW okay well that's a wrap on this side this is the side with the the sensor, the other side doesn't have a sensor, so uh, <laughs> it'll save maybe five minutes, but uh, it took me a while, uh, mainly uh, getting that rubber boot back in on the piston took a while, and yeah, it always takes a little longer on the first side than it does on the second side. Anyway, if you like this, if it helped you, give me a thumbs up, click on it. If you want to see some more, subscribe to my channel. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.